celebrating 16 years of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Lonnie Jr. and Nicholas Jones. This is Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill. Great stories about great people whose lives prove that anything is possible. My guest today, Lonnie and Nicholas Jones, thank you for being here yeah. today. Thank you for having us. Now, when I first met you, and then probably the 10th time that I saw you, I realized there is, I don't know that I've ever seen a day that your father was not just as sharp as a tack. Right. Isn't that the truth? That's true. <laughs> it thank has you. always been a pleasure to know you, and thank you for being here today. Thank you. Where'd you grow up? Well, I was born in Chattanooga, Tennessee. We were, I was educated in the Loudoun County School System, and I graduated the University of Tennessee. And um, a rural background with a semi-metropolitan attitude <laughs> is what I say, because <laughs> I've been blessed to travel quite a bit. Tell me about your parents. Well, mother and dad were phenomenal people, but... Uh, that era of time, and it's not an excuse, we're not well-educated, you know, from the uh, book standpoint, academic standpoint, but they were some of the sharpest people around. They had great common sense, common guidance, and unselfish love. And I, I want to say this, and I probably shouldn't even say it, I don't want young folks to hear it. My dad, he worked at Oak Ridge. He was on a night shift, and he would come in at 11 and after, and if I'd have homework and I didn't understand it, he'd look at it and explain it to me. And if I need to be awoken, he would wake me up and help me with it. And uh, started out as a janitor at Oak Ridge, uh, worked his way up after 25 or so years into a position of maybe managing one or two people in a supervisory capacity. Um, How much was, education did he have? My dad probably had no more than an eighth grade education. Wow. And uh, they, I call them really gritty people. They were loving, they were kind, they gave to my brother and I, Roy, who is deceased. Uh, they wanted us to, presentation-wise, not to be thought or looked down on, because what you see is what you get. And they, they had us in a role of positivism. They tried to dress us well. Uh, to fit the situations we were in. My mother was either less educated than that, but she was uh, just a sweet, darling, 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 darling lady. I, I miss both of them a lot, and my brother. But, you know, there's no reason for anyone to, to lean on negativisms. I can't control what they had or didn't have. Mm -hmm. um, but I know what they did have and what they instilled in me. It doesn't matter about your education. It's about your heart and how much love you demonstrate. And they were loving, kind, thoughtful, honest people. When you hear stories about your grandparents, what does that do for you, Nicholas? It's a big encouragement because both of my uh, grandmothers were living. Both of my grandfathers, they were deceased when I was born. Uh, but just to see them and, and hear dad talk about them, you know, because when I came up, they were older and I didn't really see the struggle. I just saw them as grandparents. So it's an encouragement to me because a lot of those things I didn't know. Right, and so I guess when you face uh, difficult times in your own life, you know that somewhere in your DNA is this gritty strength. Yes, and, sir. and you have a reserve that's embedded in your DNA that was given to you through him, through them. Right. Yes. And I, th I think that's, you know, as I got to know you a little bit better, that was the thing that really um, motivated and impressed me about you, your business, and he's in the Allstate business, and they've got a great business. But the thing that stuck out to me was your positivity, because every time I saw you, you were very, in. every time I see you, very encouraging. But this grit, this, I won't give up, I won't, I won't quit, the, this notion that, Basically, anything is possible. Yes, right. it is. 
exist. Yeah. So, so God bless your parents. Thank you. And yes. you grew up. So yes. you're a country boy with city tendencies. Yes, sir. <laughs> got some metropolitan attitude with a rural background. <laughs> so, so, so this is, and, and, and I thank you for trusting me with this part of your story. Yes. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk about your voice. You are in the found. communication business. Yes, yes. Wait until you hear about his voice, because I didn't know, and a lot of people didn't know, why your voice is the way it is. Yes. We're going to give voice to your voice when we come back. This is Anything is Possible. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. As long as I can open my mouth and get, people can understand me, uh, I would not let that affect me. But I'm still living the day because of God's grace. I know that. So country boy with metropolitan tendencies, <laughs> right? Yes. Thank you for being here today. You're in a business where, and especially, you know, when you started in the Allstate business, how, how long have you been in business? I have been in business since uh, December of 1973. I started in at the, the last month of the year in 73 and uh, really enjoyed it. Started out, to be truthful, really didn't want to do the insurance business. Uh, but as time progressed, I just felt a passion for people and the needs that we serve because insurance protection is needed by everyone no matter what part of their life. And um, God has blessed the agency to grow over the years. Uh, and with the addition of Nicholas, uh, he's been with us, with me, uh, around 10 years. And now he's running the agency uh, from a day-to-day -day, uh, operational standpoint. Very proud of him. He's done well. Uh, our only son, Christopher Jones, after he decided to uh, leave dental school, at UT uh, Memphis, he came in and worked a few months and was very successful. I didn't think he had that sales aptitude, but he did well. And now he's a professional um, medical sales or pharmaceutical sales representative in the Nashville area. So I'm very proud of both Nicholas, Christopher, and our grandson, Weston, and our daughter-in-laws. They're lovely folks. And my oh, wife, Judy. You love this guy? I love him. <laughs> I'm blessed to be with him. Work with him. What do, you, what do you love most about your dad? I would say his drive. His drive is just amazing. And uh, me being 39, seeing him at 71, and uh, days I get down, I depend on his drive. And uh, it's, uh, it's phenomenal. He's pushed me to, to be the man that I am. Uh, God first. But, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm blessed to work with him, but most of all, blessed to call him father. So you're stepping into a, a new phase of, of the business as Allstate and other companies are becoming much more digital. Yes, sir. And, and a lot of stuff is happening online and through apps. Right. And Because that's, that's where we live. But when you started in this business in the 70s, it was all right here on the phone. Yes, paper. And Not paper and, and phone, paper. right? <laughs> and so you got to talk to people. Yes. But then listen to your voice. And for I didn't know at all until one day, I, we might have been at Bravo, I don't know where we were, right. and, and you finally just told me what happened. What happened to your voice? Well, about 23, 24 years ago, I was in a ear, nose, and throat specialist uh, with my son, Nicholas. He, he was there. And um, we developed a good relationship with the, his physician. And he asked me, he said, Lonnie, why is your voice so ruffled. He said, I'd really like to take a look at it. And um, he came back in and said, after he looked at Nicholas, he said, I want to do it today. So you, you just hang around and let me just check you out today. <clears throat> and upon checking, he found this, um, went in, had me to go into the hospital after that and do a biopsy. Did the biopsy, I'm sorry, then went into the hospital and found that it was uh, cancerous, Lorenzo cancer. And uh, it was a spot on my vocal cord and where it comes together to give you a uh, definition in your speech. And that's probably one of the saddest times in my life because reasonably healthy, uh, very active in a business that you had to speak well and communicate well. I just 
You know, I thought things were leaving me faster than I could even compensate or understand it. But as God saw it, it was really a better drive. It gave me more drive. I was not going to let that. As uh, long as I could open my mouth and could, people could understand me, uh, I would not let that affect me. But I'm still living today because of God's grace. I know that. Are you and early detection. Are you cancer free? Yes, I am. But you made an incredible decision. You made the decision not to tell yes. anyone. I did not. I You're did. at the doctor with him, and right. you just found out. Yes, sir. It's been just a few years ago. I had no idea. I just thought it was a thyroid situation, but didn't realize the severity of it. And, and your wife, she's, she's had her struggles. So yes. you guys have had your health struggles. Yes. But you didn't let on. You just kept pushing. Why didn't you tell anyone? Why didn't you say, hey, you know, the reason my voice sounds like this, why didn't you give up? Why didn't you say, I got to find another business? Well, I was in a business I loved. Uh, I found myself appreciating life more. And I wanted to do what I felt I did best. And that was sell insurance and communicate and help people. Uh, I did not, my mother passed without knowing it. My brother passed without knowing it, and s several friends. And until a few years ago, uh, I really hadn't told anyone. Uh, Nicholas and Christopher, I only knew a few years ago. But even with that, not telling my mom and friends, um, I think we ought to be living a life of positive things. Mm -hmm. And we have so many great things to talk about. And if you're not in your bed, lying down, can't walk, can't talk, can't see, I'm blessed not to be a burden on anyone. And my wife, Judy, is such a just substantial, spirit-filled, beautiful lady inside and out. And she has cared for me like a baby all my marital life. And so <laughs> you're you're laughing spoiled. like that's the truth. <laughs> I'm, I'm spoiled by her, but she was a big incentive for me. Um, she kept me grounded. So you didn't want to tell anybody because you didn't want to burden anybody. No, I didn't. I mean, if Nicholas... you can't help me, I don't want you to hurt me. <laughs> so, and I don't want to hurt anyone either. So, but... Nicholas, let, let me just swing over to you for a minute. What, is the, what does that do for you as a, as a younger man taking over the family business, knowing this about your dad? What emotions did that bring to you? What, what goes on in your heart and mind? Well, it's just, you know, dad shows love to me daily. And uh, he's very hard on me, but he does it out of love. And you understand it more because of his story. Uh, so my drive has either, you know, has increased tremendously because I see him daily calling, doing things that, uh, you know, that I'm learning to do. But uh, Halloran, one of the things that impacted me the most, like you said, with the technology, most, 95% of my clients I never see. I talk to them over the phone, Amen. email, but I still have clients that dad wrote in the 70s that said, hey, I remember when Lonnie was sitting in my kitchen table writing the application. Still to this day, they remember that. And that's what drives me to try to have that impact on our clients. You've been called to the ministry. Yes, sir. When did that happen and, and why do you think that happened? I've been running for a good while. I've probably been preaching since probably about 2011, 2012. Uh, but God told me, he said, Nick, you can't straddle the fence. Either you're going to announce your calling or I'm going to take the gift from you. So once he said that, I said, I'm ready, Lord. So I've been blessed to do it. And uh, it's, a, it's, a daily, it's a daily battle, but God has given me uh, the grace that I need. As my pastor tells me, he says, Nicholas, God will give you the grace or whatever you go through in your ministry. You said that he's hard on you, yes, right? Sir. So you have this father that's hard on you and you have that father that's hard on you. Yes, sir. What's something that he was hard on you about that you didn't understand at the time, but then you got further down the road and you're like, man, thank you for... I think it's just when I was younger, dad and mom told me, said, Nicholas, wherever you go, carry yourself well. And uh, one time I was at the mall and being a teenager, 
and uh, we were living in Philadelphia, Tennessee at the time, and word got back to Dad that I wasn't acting right. And uh, <laughs> so it's learning to carry yourself no matter where you are in a respectful way, most of all to God. But I represent him first, and I represent my parents, I represent myself and my wife. So that's the one thing that sticks out. Always remember to carry yourself, no matter if you're, no matter where you are, carry yourself where you're going to be represented uh, with that name. Wow. Let's take a break. When we come back, more of this great story of possibility. This is Lonnie Jones. This is uh, Nicholas Jones. They are country boys with metropolitan tendencies. <laughs> more in a moment. <laughs> Coming up. We all share a common bond. Doesn't matter who you are, what race you come from. Success is available if you want it bad enough. I really wanted you guys here to, today um, because I think you have such an incredible story. You've had an all-state agency since the 70s. How many right. years total have you been in business? Be 45. 45 years in business. Yes, were you one of the first African Americans to be in this business in the yes, state? Yes, in Knoxville, and probably the second or third uh, African American agent in uh, Tennessee. Well, that Memphis and Nashville probably was ahead of me than Knoxville, I, and I came in third. That is that's pretty incredible to be here to have that that right. kind of, of staying power. Uh, your book of business, I guess you guys do great volume now as well. Yes, we do, and I have to give credit to the Knoxville community. Both the majority community and the minority community has been exceptionally gracious and kind to us, but we try to do the best in our presentation. We can't change rates, but we can give you avenues to help you with your rates. We've always been forthright. We've always been honest. And what we say, we try to do. And that has been one of my key philosophies in my life is don't overcommit and do what you say you're gonna do. And we've had so many clients in my space and time when I was there every day that would tell me personal things about their life that they probably wouldn't tell anyone else because they knew that I don't run in their circles. And people like to communicate their problem. They love to have something, somebody to bounce things off of that you have to pay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I've been blessed to have that. I have clients all over the state uh, we've been blessed to run a successful agency with staff. Can't do anything without your staff. I can't do it all. Nicholas can't do it all. But in seven, 16 and 17 was one of this year we were honored with uh, probably one of the highest awards that Allstate gives. And our agency won it in um, 2016. We received it in 2017. Let me tell you why I wanted uh, you here today. I want people to see this. You, you rarely get to see this. A father and a son, together, doing business, doing life together, you know, pushing through the struggles together. But, but take a look at this. Take a look at a father and a son, the generational transfer that's going on. I, I love you guys for just being that in, in our community. And I want to wrap by having you guys just give me wisdom from two perspectives, from the uh, more seasoned country guy and uh, the younger country guy. You like the way I did? Right. <laughs> hey, man. Seasoned just, sounds good. <laughs> so, so I'm going to ask you, and you can give me real quick answers. I'm going to say, what have you learned about? And then you give me from your perspective and your perspective. What have you learned about family? Most of all, communication. What have you learned about family? Togetherness. Um, I guess I was a little bit harder on my parents than I should have been because yeah, I, I regretted things that they didn't do. And I'm talking about um, we're educated. Um, but not in a negative way because they offered the best that they could offer. And family now for my family. I, my wife is a lovely, lovely lady of 45 years. <laughs> and, <laughs> we have two fine sons, Nicola, uh, Nicholas Jones, our youngest, and Christopher W. Jones, and wife, Rainey, and Nicholas, and his wife, Sierra, and our 
phenomenal grandson, Weston. And I've been, God has permitted me to live, to transition all through this. Amen. See the good, bad, and difference in life. And it's also taught me that people are people. All right. One word, what have you learned about money? Accountability. Investing. Mm. What have you learned about God? Powerful. Great. Almighty. And then finally, what have you learned about possibility? Anything is possible. Unlimited opportunities. I want to give you the last word. What do you want to say to... Well, first, I'm thankful to be here. I'm honored to be on your program, but I'm, more than that, I'm honored to be considered one of your friends and one of my friends. Our, we're fraternity brothers. I've had a great deal of respect for you in your drive, in your career here in Knoxville. We all share a common bond. Doesn't matter who you are, what race you come from. Success is available if you want it bad enough. Thank you guys for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. What do you want to say about him? I'm just blessed to know him, and I love him. I, I just thank God for the opportunity to call him Father. Thank Amen. you guys very much. Thank you, thank sir. Thank you. You are a picture of possibility. We'll see you next time on Anything is Possible.